Editors, listen up. You work late, you push pixels, you chase perfection while the world sleeps. But today, everything changes. No more second guessing, no more endless tweaks. It's time to edit with confidence, take control, and bring back the balance to the chaos because now, M Coaching is here. So sit up, lock in, and let's get to work. M Coaching for DaVinci Resolve is finally here. And in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down how you can get the most out of it. So without wasting any more time, let's dive straight in. So just like I said before, today we're going to be going through M Coaching, a brand new pack you'll find in the effects tab once it's been installed via the M installer. This pack contains 58 titles, 11 effects, and 13 transitions. And they all work on a drag and drop basis where you'll either drag the titles onto the timeline or the effects directly onto the clips. Diving into this pack as a general overview, we have nine different sections that we'll get into. We have the placeholders and tools that come under the effects tab. Then everything from infographics to typography comes under the titles. And finally, we have the M coaching section at the bottom, which are the transitions. We'll get started in the largest section of the pack, which is everything that comes under the titles. As once you understand how to use these, everything else in this pack will be super easy. I'll start with the step-by-step -step infographic we have here as it's the most complex. And you'll see at default, we have five steps on this diagram popping up with the first and fifth step being highlighted. First things first, if you're working on a 4K timeline, you want to hit this box ensuring that the sizing and quality is correct. Then we'll head up to the top and we have these in and out points. These boxes allow us to switch on or off the animation of where the layer starts. Now diving into how to control the active diagram. We first have the control tabs and this is the overarching control center where you'll manipulate how the entire graphic or effect looks. So that's moving the position, the size and the rotation. Then from here is where the titles begin to differ. You'll have different tabs depending on which title you're using, but they all work in a similar way to control the various elements. So first up is the chart controls, which controls the actual diagram settings. So the amount of steps, how far away they're spread, the sizing, the thickness, the colors, everything you'd need to really fine tune it to how you like it. And then what's super cool about this title in particular is the distortion effect. Playing around with that can allow you to get some super creative results. From there, heading into the actual steps, we can choose whether we want the circle to be left blanked or filled in. So this is indicating which step is being highlighted. Then we have the text box where you can change the number, or I guess you could put anything in this box, but I'll keep it as a number for now. Then under that, we have all the standard title settings. So you can adjust that just like you normally would. So you have the font, the colors, the sizing. And then we also have control the description, which is where it says idea above. So we can toggle that on or off. We can also adjust where that's placed. So if you want it lower, if we want it higher to the left or right, we can adjust this sizing. So you can really fine tune all these settings to get exactly what you're looking for. So now that I've adjusted all of my steps, we'll move on to the last tab, which is the glow controls. This is pretty self-explanatory. This controls the settings of how much you want the title to glow. So, so talking on and off, you can see it's very minimal. It's not adding too much, but you can always dial that in, have more of a glow if you want it to be more obvious. I think this is a case of less is more, so I'm going to keep it quite minimal. Then lastly, we have the drop shadow section at the bottom, which is how you can get your title to stand out a little bit more when the footage you have behind is on the brighter side. And just like that, you have a finished result. Next, we have a miscellaneous section, which has an array of different titles and effects. We have entire screen effects like this achievement, badge, and the three steps. And then we have some add-ons like the tick and cross, the choice options, and the gradient, all of which are completely customizable. Something to be aware of though is on the full screen effects like the achievement, the badge, as well as the three steps, you can actually remove the background so you can still have the video layer playing underneath. The placeholders introduce a new add-on where you can actually import your logo or profile photos to the title. So I'll drag on the logo placeholder, but this process is the exact same as the other ones. You just head into the inspector tab. The tab will either be called the logo controls or drop zone controls. And in those tabs, you're going to see this browse button. This is where you can head into your storage and find your logo or photo that you'd like to use and that's it. You can then adjust the look of that to make sure it's how you want it and you're good to go. The symbols are super cool ways to add some extra spice to your videos. Most of these graphics are super simple and they're good to go without any work. But of course you can fine tune them so you can get the exact look you want. And they'll work in the exact same way as before when it comes to the tabs and control. In a very similar way, we have the tools and typography sections. Again, really easy to operate where you just drag and drop, add in the text you want, and you're done. All great ways to level up your video projects with these titles. One of my personal favorites would be stacking the notifications title as well as the chat that you'll find inside the tools. And then this will help create a sequence that someone getting a notification on their phone and showing the conversation that's being had. And that's the entire title section. Now we'll tackle the effects section, kicking off with the placeholders. 
The first thing to note though is that we are dragging these effects directly onto the clip, opposed to what we were doing before when we were putting them onto the timeline. Now I know I already spoke about a placeholder section, but this one operates slightly differently. The placeholders allow you to put footage inside different frames or footage windows. So dragging this comparison placeholder onto the footage, we're going to see it double up. That's because this is meant for two different sources to go inside each of the windows. So instead of putting it on the one clip, you'd actually want to make a fusion clip. Now it's pretty obvious with this one that two sources would be needed, but sometimes there are a few more. So to find out how many sources we would need, we would just take a look at the clip at the top of the inspector where we can see how many clips this placeholder is built for. So I'll go ahead and remove this and source my second clip. Then I'll highlight both, right click and make a new fusion clip. And now when I drag the comparison onto this, we're going to see both clips are there side by side. This would be a case where I actually remove the in and out points just so I have the effect there from the beginning. And if you find that the clips are the wrong way around, to fix that, all we need to do is right click on the fusion clip open a timeline, switch around the layers, and it will automatically adjust once you come back to the main timeline. But luckily, not all of the placeholders do require fusion layers. A lot of them you can just drag directly onto your footage and you're good to go. I do find the best way to use these placeholders is to stack them with multiple other things from this pack. So that's having some extra footage, putting on some titles, and then you have a great looking sequence. The remaining section inside the effects tab is the tools. This is where you can get some super cool effects to make your footage pop and stand out. But note that the best way to use these effects is instead of dragging them onto the footage, actually placing an adjustment layer above the footage and applying the effects to that. This ensures that the effect doesn't crash due to the missed timing of the clip if you're not using the video from the very start to the very end. And if you shorten or lengthen the clip after you apply the effect, that does cause it to go a bit crazy. And that goes for all the built-in DaVinci Resolve effects too. So an adjustment layer is your best bet. So up first, we have the fisheye lens which gives you this trippy fisheye look, which I think would really suit a focused or heavy thinking type of scene. At default, it's quite a heavy effect. So I actually like to take off the colorization and the footage adjustment so that the only effect is the actual warping as well as the prism. This keeps it subtle, but effective. But of course, all the parameters are here for you to adjust so you can really dial in the look that you're going for. And then the final three tools are various types of zooms. These will allow you to punch into different parts of the image, giving attention to the area of the screen that you want to highlight. They all work in a similar but slightly different way. The zoom at the bottom is a punch in with this flash effect on the in and out. This you can change or completely remove if you want. And then the quake zoom does a similar thing but adds an earthquake type shake on the in and out points. And lastly, we have the multiple zoom which goes to multiple points inside the image, which you can manipulate by either using the X and Y points inside the inspector, or my preferred way is to actually turn on the fusion overlay controls here, and then you'll see these green dots. They'll control where you're zooming into, just make sure you're scrubbing on the timeline and going to the actual zoom point, instead of just doing them all at the beginning, as it will end up not being very accurate. And to finish off, we have the transitions. These are pretty easy to use where you'll drag and drop the transitions between the clips and adjust the length of them by dragging this box here. Then the effects in the transition will automatically adjust to the length of time. So I hope this overview has been helpful for you to better understand how to use M Coaching. Remember, if you have any questions at all, please drop them down in the comments below or head to our website at motionfearfx.com. I've been JC and this has been your overview of the M Coaching Pack. I'll catch you in the next one.